Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. And what I'd like to do in this video is give you an update on what's happening in the Arctic. There's been quite a bit of press in the mainstream media, unusually, about the extreme temperatures in the Arctic and how it's causing extreme uh, melting of the ice. So the ice is not regrowing as quickly in the uh, Arctic, also in Antarctica. And this is because of the very, very warm temperatures there. So I'm going to discuss um, where things are, are now and where things are heading um, in this um, video. I kind of miss doing videos. I haven't done any for about, you know, a month or so, as people have pointed out to me. So, you know, I always enjoy doing them. So um, the one of the ways to ensure that I do more is to please consider a... Uh, end of the year uh, donation to my website, uh, paulbeckwith.net. Um, my income for the last number of years has been under the poverty line because I, of my concern for climate change and, you know, more interested in getting the message out on how serious things are um, with abrupt climate change and how it's going to affect us in the future. Also, I think in the last month, um, anybody that really cares about our planet um, is sort of licking their wounds right now after the um, after the um, after Donald Trump uh, you know won won the U.S. election, and of course there's lots of questions as to you know <clears throat> how that possibly happened. Um, lots of stuff going on. Um, anyway, that's not the purpose of this video. So. What we have here is if you just Google uh, climate reanalyzer, then this is, and if you go to daily, um, if you click on, on, on daily um, results near the top, um, this is what you get. So this is the temperature. So the key thing that, we're, that we've been seeing in the Arctic is the Arctic is a lot warmer than the surrounding continent. So we talk about, people talk about cold continents, warm oceans. Um, and this is a direct result of the, um, well, basically there's a polar vortex, um, a very high uh, pressure level, say 10 millibar, and that um, basically split um, early on in the year because we lost so much sea ice that there's a lot of heat coming up and that split the vortex. So we're separated. At first, we had just cold air over Asia, record cold air over Asia, and then and, and lately it's come, it's split and it's come down into covering North America at the moment too. <clears throat> so if you just click on this map, then you can see um, the temperature, um, the, this is a temperature around the globe, so you can see more evidence of this. This is over Asia, you know, the warmer the cold, very cold air here, warmer over the Arctic Ocean, and colder here over North America. <clears throat> and again, you can see it up here in this view. And in the Southern Hemisphere, um, you can see what's going on here with Antarctica. Of course, it's, it's uh, Northern Hemisphere, the boreal winter, Southern Hemisphere, summer. If we go to temperature anomaly here, just by hovering the mouse button over temperature anomaly, um, you can see that there's regions of Antarctica that are much warmer than normal. But the key thing here is we have um, regions here that are much warmer than normal. Regions here that are much warmer than normal. The scale's over here, 20 degrees Celsius. And then we have these cold areas here and over Greenland, and also the air is coming down here. Um, so we get these, this pattern is beginning to become quite frequent in the Arctic. And if we look um, at other regions, you can see it here from a different viewpoint just by clicking on this. And again, you can see it here, the very warm area as you go further south in Asia, the cold area, this was extremely cold a few months ago and it's um, it's not as cold now and this wasn't there a few months ago and now it's there and you get the warm area here over the over the Arctic Ocean 
and if we can another view here and in the southern hemisphere you get this as I showed you um, now sea surface temperatures anomalies let's look at this the anomalies of sea surface temperature of course these temperatures affect everything so if we go to the northern hemisphere then what you see here is you see the jets the the Gulf Stream is coming up off the eastern coast of the US all of this warm water and we had a warm pool south of Greenland for a lot of the summer from additional meltwater. And now the warm water has been slicing through. That cold water has come somewhat moved down here. And the warm water from the Gulf Stream is, is cutting through. And we're getting these cold pockets here of, of, of water that's coming down. Um, and if we go over to, if we look at the, um, you can see here, um, that there's, this is just another viewpoint here. Um, you can see some very cold water here from the, from the, the very cold temperatures recently. And then off Japan, we've got the Kuroshio current, which is the, it's, it's like the Gulf Stream, only off the coast of Japan, Asia. And so the warm water comes up here and it's also slicing through. Um, of course, warm water is lighter than cold water, so it will tend to overflow, overflow on top of the cold water, pushing the cold water down, and we're seeing the remnants of the cold water that's left here. Interesting pockets here. Um, and this is another view here, so we can see these waves here. Remember, we had a very powerful El Nino, which is where the, the walker circulation winds, the winds that push the water at the equator over to Indonesia and the islands, when that um, strengthens, then we get the La Nina effect. Um, and when it weakens, the water sloshes over, the warm water comes here, we get the El Nino. So we had a record El Nino, of course, um, in, in 2015, and it dissipated, and, uh, but the global temperatures have not dropped off. So this is not powerful enough to be classified as a La Nina. Um, I call it a la nothing. Um, so basically, uh, you get all these different patterns, and we're getting a lot of structure in these patterns. Of course, we're in the summer in the southern hemisphere, so this is undoubtedly, you know, river runoff of extremely warm rivers. My guess would be it was probably so it would be very fresh water. Um, and then as we go down to um, Antarctica. You can see the patterns here, and we're, we saw a similar pattern like this starting to develop off Australia. So last year, um, in 2016, or rather this year, it's still a few days to go to 2017, um, we had extremely warm temperatures in, in, in uh, March, April, um, or, or, or starting February, March, April in the Southern Hemisphere, and that um, destroyed vast parts, regions of the Australian Great Barrier Reef, which is a huge biodiversity um, region. Um, another thing that's very useful is to look at the jet stream winds. So we'll come, we'll start here. So you can see this powerful trough here, and then um, these ridges that extend up fairly high to the north. So this is warm air coming up here, and this is cold air coming here, which is why North America is extremely cold right now. Um, and if we go over and look at Europe, then you can see um, this type of pattern. And um, I will show you um, how that's affecting Europe in a minute. Um, this is over Asia, very powerful streaks in the uh, jet stream. And as we, another view from North America, and a lot of interesting things going on here. And if we, as we look over into the Southern Hemisphere, you can see these uh, streaky patterns in the jet stream. Now, I wanna look at sea ice and snow. So, as I'll show in a couple graphs, it's very, very low, it's much lower than normal in Antarctica at this time of year. And as we go to the north, it's much lower than normal. There's still open water here, open water here, very, very thin ice. And as we go over here, so, so this is, you can see, this is sea ice and snow. So look at the snow cover here. Notice that there's very little snow over Europe right now. And 
Europe is, they're, they're suffering a lot. Um, I just saw a report that was talking about 145,000 people that normally have employment on the slopes, on the great skiing resorts in Europe and in France and other places. Uh, no snow on those hills right now. So, so these people are, have all lost their jobs. Um, hopefully this changes in the new year, but the wind patterns and the ocean patterns are just not bringing precipitation over Europe and it's also too warm. So we're not getting the snow and this, uh, this is crippling the skiing industry in this whole region. Um, and we can go on and you can see what's happening over Asia and over, over North America. Okay, so let's move on. You know, climate reanalyzer, lots of good stuff there. Now, this is the jet stream patterns from Earth Null School. So what you can see is, you can see that there's a sharp crossing of the equator here. I did a video on this. This is still a very controversial topic, but it makes sense that as the ridges of the jet stream penetrate right into the Arctic, it brings tremendous warm air. As the troughs go far, far enough south, they're actually crossing the equator. As I explained in a very controversial video back in June, July sort of time frame, and they're joining with the Southern Hemisphere. So this is what we're getting with these jet stream behaviors. We're getting an equalization of temperature with latitude in the Northern Hemisphere. And what this is, this is because of Arctic temperature amplification, um, which is due to the loss of sea ice and snow cover. So what we're doing is we're getting an equalization of temperature with latitude. And you know where this is going to head. This is going to head to an ice-free Arctic and tremendous melt on Greenland and rapid ejection of emissions of CO2 and methane from the permafrost. And in fact, it was estimated, a recent paper just indicated that we're, well, CO2 levels are record levels. So in 2015, we had 3.05 parts per million rise, which blows away any previous record. In 2016, when the numbers come through, we're expecting something like 3.2, 3.3, up to 3.5 even parts per million rise. This is under the backdrop, according to the, I the um, International Energy Agency, the uh, IEA, uh, global human emissions leveled off over the last four years. So this is extremely concerning. Now. A recent paper said that just because of CO2 coming up from the Arctic, um, that the, that's going to be contributing between 0.41 parts per million, um, or 0.45 parts per million, and 0.71 parts per million um, each year to that CO2 number. And that's only going to grow. The oceans are also warming, of course, and therefore the solubility of CO2 decreases. They, the oceans can't absorb as much CO2. We're, we're stressing the boreal forests. We're stressing the Amazon rainforest from fires and pestilence and die off. And this is a loss of a carbon dioxide sink. And also the oceans, because they're more stratified, nutrients aren't being upwelled. So we're having less phytoplankton growth. And this also reduces the biological, so-called biological pump, which takes CO2 out of the atmosphere. So all of these things are contributing um, to our problem. Now, if you look at the Northern Hemisphere, at the jet streams, so this is, uh, you get these jet streams, if you just Google Earth Null School and select air and 250 millibar heights, then th this is what we see, uh, the jet streams. So you can see these troughs here carrying colder air down um, over North America, as I showed you earlier, and these ridges are bringing up warm air and um, you can also see that there's a lot of um, problems in the southern hemisphere as well. The jet stream is behaving, is, is breaking up and it's behaving very unusual there. Now, one another thing I want to show you is if you go to the 10 hexapascal level, okay, it's a thousand millibar, a mil one millibar is a hexapascal at the surface, 
and you lose about 100 millibar of pressure for every kilometer that you rise up. It's very non